This is the story of the three-legged cat, written by Margaret Mahi and illustrated by Jonathan Allen. There once was an old tabby cat called Tom, who longed to prowl around the world. He longed to see hills and valleys and wild, mysterious woods as well. He longed to see the sea, but Tom was a three-legged cat. Prowling was difficult with only three legs. What he was good at was curling up neatly, wrapping his tabby tail around himself, and going to sleep. As he slept, though, he dreamed of a wide world, and his three paws twitched. Tom lived with short-sighted Mrs Gimble of Number 7 Cardamom Street. She was a most respectable widow. She liked cats, but she liked them best when they were curled up and slept. It bothered her to see Tom come running or dot and go carry one whenever she opened the fridge. You'll eat me out of house and home, she said. She wanted a cat who would stay put and eat nothing. She certainly didn't want a prowler. One prowler in the family is quite enough, said Mrs Gimble, for she had a rascally roving swagman brother called Cyril. All year... He prowled up hill and down and around and in and out the edges of the world, wearing his revolting, molting Russian hat to keep his bald head warm. Once a year he would look in at number seven Cardamom Street for a cup of tea and a bit of a chinwag. Oh dear, Mrs Gimble knew the neighbours would be watching. As the revolting, molting Russian hat came up the street and turned in at her gate. Yes, she grumbled to Tom. One prowler is more than enough. Tom wrapped himself around with his own tabby tail. He dreamed of prowling beside the sea. In his dream, the sea was pink and fizzy. He dreamed of forests and fields of sheep. In his dream, the forests were no higher than hedges and the sheep ran about like woolly hedgehogs. Thank goodness Tom isn't one of those prowling cats, thought Mrs Gimble. I'm glad he only has three legs. Then she heard a f familiar step on the path. Horror, Kapochkin, a molting, revolting Russian hat was coming up the path to her door. It was Cyril, the swag man. What would the neighbour say? Knock, knock, went the door. Hello, Daisy. How about a cup of tea and a chin wag? cried Cyril. Oh, Cyril, Cyril, it's lovely to see you, but why don't you curl up and settle down, Mrs Gimble said as she poured a cup of tea for her brother. She wept into the teapot. Don't cry into my tea, Daisy. I take sugar, not salt, said Cyril. But perhaps you're right. I love prowling the world, but my mat, my hat has molted badly. Somehow it doesn't keep my head as warm as it used to. It's not much fun prowling about with a bald head when it's cold. Perhaps I should settle down once more round the world, and then I'll think about it. Mrs. Gimble looked anxiously out of the window. Her neighbours didn't prowl, but they did pry. Suppose they see there's a swagman sitting in here having a cup of tea and a bit of a chin wag, she thought. Hastily, she pulled the curtains. As Cyril poured tea into his saucer so that it would cool quickly, Mrs. Gimble told him all about a new furniture polish she had discovered on sale, and Cyril told her how to prowl successfully during earthquakes. But Mrs Gimble hated the idea of earthquakes, and Cyril, who had no furniture, was not the least bit interested in furniture polish. Well, it's time to be on my way, Cyril said at last. He picked up his hat, but it wasn't his hat. He put on his hat, but it wasn't his hat. Out into the street he strolled, wearing Tom, the three-legged cat. He was curled around his bald head, sound asleep. Goodbye, old girl, he called to Mrs Gimble. 
I'll be back this time next year for a cup of tea and a chin wag. And that? off went Cyril the swag man, and with him went Tom the three-legged cat. My hat is deliciously warm, Cyril thought as he marched down the road. My bald head feels so cosy I could prowl all the way around the world wearing a hat as warm as this. Tom the cat woke to find that he was wrapped snugly around a bald head and riding down the road. There, right in front of him, was the beginning of the country. He saw hedges, he saw hogs, he even saw hedgehogs and fields full of sheep. The world stretched all the way to the edge of the sky. I'm seeing the wide world at last, Tom thought in amazement. He wrapped his tabby tail more firmly around Cyril's ears. The wide world is so much wider than I thought. This hat is so much warmer than I thought it was, muttered Cyril the swag man, walking up over the hill. Then... Tom the cat saw the sea for the first time. It was not pink, it was green, it was not fizzy. It rolled backwards and forwards all the way around the world. The sea, the sea, thought Tom the cat. I am seeing the sea. He began to purr. My hat is purring, thought Cyril the swag man. It's never purred before. A tabby tail twitched in front of his eyes. Horakapochkin! I've carried off Daisy's three-legged cat, cried Cyril the swag man. It's just as well I have enough sausages for the two of us. Meanwhile, back at number seven, Cardamon Street, Mrs Gimble was sitting by the fire stroking the hat. It sat very still, and when she opened the fridge, the hat did not, did not stir. It just sat there, molting slightly. My cat is suddenly cheap to feed, thought Mrs. Gimble. The hat did not show the least bit of interest, even when she ate her own fish dinner. And out in the wide world, Cyril and Tom were sharing the sausages. I won't settle down after all, said Cyril the swag man, stroking Tom. You can curl around my bald head and keep it cosy, while I do the prowling for both of us. I've never had a better hat than a very friendly three-legged cat. And I've never had a better cat, said Mrs. Gimble, stroking the Russian hat tenderly. It's true that it molts, but we all have our faults, and it's cheap to keep and always asleep. The wide world beckoned, Tom purred, the hat just sat on Mrs. Gimble's lap, and everyone lived happily ever after.